Today on Perpetual Projects, we are going to raptor line our Jeep. You could just put it in the, they call it a Schutz gun, that you spray the raptor liner through normally and it sprays it just like bed liner and it's got that real rough texture. And while that's cool, I just think it's a little too rough for the outside. I mean, if you have to wash it, it's just, it's just too rough. So I've done this before once six or seven years ago. When I got ready to do it, I tried to do some research and there's just not a lot available. So I'm gonna show you what I did. We'll show you how it turns out and then you can decide if it's good for your project or not. But first, let's talk about what we did to prepare this. And I'm not saying that these steps are right. This is just what we did. I scuffed it all, smoothed out all the bodywork that was already on here. We did change the quarters on this and you know, most of the time when you buy one of these Jeeps, you see these Jeeps all the time, they have that, that diamond plate that covers all the, the destroyed body panels. And I just don't like the way that looks. So I chose to put, put quarters on this. We actually, from the, the seam there all the way back and around the side, except for the pack, back panel here, we replaced all of this. And part of that was to get the, the CJ gas tank on the right side, because this is a YJ body or YJ tub. And the other part of it was to replace some really, really hammered body panels. After we got the, the everything scuffed, because after we did that, we shot epoxy primer on it, but that was like six years ago, and it had deteriorated in the sun. So we scuffed it all real good, got all the loose stuff off, whatever was there and adhering, we left on there. We sprayed a two-part epoxy primer on everything, did our body work, and then now we've sealed it with a two-part epoxy primer. That's yesterday, so we should be inside the open time on this epoxy to go ahead and get our Raptor liner on here and it should stick real well. So what we're using today is Raptor liner. And this is a two part urethane bed liner and it works really, really good. I, uh, I've actually done several bed liners with this and the results are awesome. But we don't want that super rough texture so we're gonna reduce it so that we can spray it through an HVLP gun and that will reduce the texture to a more the, almost like a, a soft texture on a wall. It's gonna be bumpy, but not, not grippy like a bed liner would be. So what we're gonna use to reduce it is just a universal urethane reducer. This is medium, and the medium is the temperature range. It's like a 65 to 80 degree temperature range, and since it's like 68 degrees today, it's perfect. The Raptor is a three to one ratio with the hardener, and we're gonna mix it 20% hard, uh, reducer, so that's three to one to one, and we'll just pour it, and the way these scales work, if you don't know, is pour it to five with the Raptor, to five with the, act, the hardener, and to five with the reducer, and you end up with three parts Raptor, one part uh, hardener, and one part reducer. And that'll be 20% reduced so that it'll spray through our HVLP gun. And this gun, they're expensive, but they are totally worth it. Because, so if you don't know much about paint guns, the part that you usually have trouble with is the fluid nozzle, which is inside here, the air cap gets plugged up, and then the needle packing starts leaking after, after time. And that can all be fixed, but this gun, once you buy it, that part is disposable. And in fact, you use these two or three times, you toss them and get another one. They're not real expensive to replace once you have this part. The other nice part about these guns is this is a 1.4 tip. This is a 2.0 tip. And if you have a regular paint gun, you have to change the, at a minimum, the fluid nozzle and the air cap to change the tip size to spray different materials. Like a 1.4 is good for like your base coats and some thin primers. And then the 1.8 the would be more for like your thicker primers, like your primer surfacers and things like that. And then a 2.0 would be good for like really high build primers. But this gun with just a simple fluid cap or a, I don't know what they call this piece, you change this piece and you have a different size paint gun and you can spray different materials with it. The other nice part about these is the cup is disposable. So this has a cup, a plastic cup, and then it's got this plastic insert that you don't wash these out, you just toss them. There's a built-in filter in the cap and that's gonna be good for our purposes today because you would never be able to pour this through a strainer. It's just not possible, it's too thick. Oh, the other thing, we're gonna spray this 
with around 30 pounds of air pressure and kind of see how it's turning out. And if as you adjust your reduce rate and your air pressure, you can change the texture that you're getting. So we'll start with 30. Um, I believe if you go up, it'll be more smooth. If you go down, it'll be more it'll be more globby and, and have more texture to it. So we're gonna start at 30 and see how, it, how it's going at that point. And all this stuff you can get on Amazon. We will drop links to all of it in the description. I should also mention that this stuff is tintable. So um, when you buy it, you have to buy it. It's a different different actual Raptor liner and they have to buy the tint, the, the color of your choice. But this one we already had mixed up. So you can get safety orange Raptor liner as well, which we might have a use for that in the future. Okay, so we got the Raptor done on the main tub of the, of the Jeep here, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it in the video, but when I first started spraying it, it was, it was coming out and it was actually laying down very, very flat. I mean, it, it was a little bit textured, but not anything more like what I was expecting. Well, about halfway through spraying the cow here, I realized that it wasn't actually putting any, any paint or any material out. So a trick that, you can blow air back into the cup and sometimes if you have a blockage that'll clear it well doesn't work so well on a sealed cup gun like this one because it pressurizes the cup the cup well then the first pass i made here it was putting out material and that's why we have a little bit of it's it's kind of thick in this area but you can't really tell it's it, yeah it's fine but so the lesson there was which I don't know why I didn't think of it and Amber didn't say anything. If this material won't go through a paper paint strainer, why would I think it would go through the strainer in the cup? So yeah, that was the problem. Uh, I cut it out for the second coat, which leads to my second tip. Wear gloves. This stuff does not come off your skin. Uh, I, I Again, it's been a long time since I did any paint, painting and I, I just wasn't thinking. So wear gloves, wear a respirator, which we had one on. Uh, this stuff is nasty and it will, and you, this and until my, my skin wears off in these areas, this paint will be on my hands. So uh, yeah. But I'm really happy with how it turned out. The texture is awesome. It's not rough, like it's, it's textured, but it's not rough. Like 
There's a few globs and you'll get this when you use seven year old paint. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see those on camera, but as you wash it, those will wear down. Try this from the future. The first bottle worked fine, but uh, I mixed up some to spray the front wrap and yeah, we got a little bit of a disaster here. Good news is this stuff does sand, so I guess I'm letting this dry so I can sand it off. Uh, we bought new to do the rest of the front wrap and we'll have to redo the hood. We got a good example right here. You can see this is our reduced sprayed finish with Raptor and this is our brushed or rolled rough texture with the Herculiner. And the Raptor turns out similar to this when you spray it out of that gun or if you roll it, it's pretty, it's pretty similar too. So that's the, that's the reason we didn't want this rough. I mean, this is really like sandpaper rough and it'll be good for the inside of the Jeep, but it would be terrible for the outside of Jeep in, in my opinion. I mean, you can ro roll it and get that finish. You can change the rollers around too. If you use a, sm a smooth roller, you get a smoother finish. There's other ways to do it. This is just how we chose to do it. And what I ended up doing was I sprayed this with 30 pounds of air pressure. Uh, I tried 20 when I was having the trouble with the, the gun not putting out enough material, trying to get it a little bit rougher, and that did make it a little bit rougher. But once I got the, once I figured out the whole filter thing, 30 was the right pressure for this finish that we have here. I hope you guys learned something. It's really easy to do this. If you have an off-road vehicle, I definitely recommend it. See you soon.